Lesson 13, Isis, Iso, and the Chorazin Group and the Battle of Amagadon. In this chapter, I would like to discuss with you about Isis and Iso from the view of Chapter 16 of the Book of Revelation. The Islamic State in Iraq and the Sham, simply called Isis, ISIS, is a brutal Islamic jihadist terrorist group recently emerged in Iraq and Syria. They have already captured more than 20 cities and towns along the Euphrates River, along the Euphrates River, and declared statehood on June 29, 2014. Isis is also the name of the Egyptian moon goddess, one of the three evil spirits in the Bible, originate from the core of the ancient Babylon, correspondingly present-day Iraq. The Western media also called Isis as ISO, the Islamic State in Iraq and Levant. Levant is a Western geographical term of a region, meaning the east where the sun rises. Therefore, Isis is also the kings from the east in the Bible. Do you want to know about what they are going to do in the near future from the Bible? Please give me some more time to express the details to you. Today's Iraq was the core of the ancient Babylon. When we see there are massive end-time prophecies about Babylon found in the book of Revelation, how can we ignore what has been happening in Iraq? In 2003, the U.S. accused Iraq to possess weapons of mass destruction and led her coalition to invade Iraq. On the 1st of May 2003, President Bush declared the end of major combat operations in Iraq while aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln with a large mission accomplished banner displayed behind him. The Saddam Hussein regime was removed. Despite the defeat of the old Iraqi army, irregular forces, both Iraqi and external, for example, the secret police of the former regime have conducted attacks against the coalition and later the new Iraqi government. Their insurgency began by using ambush tactics and suicide bombings targeting coalition forces and checkpoints, resulting in about more than a hundred multinational force personnel deaths per month. In recent years, a jihadist group called ISIS ISIS has emerged rapidly. They have already captured and controlled more than 20 cities and towns along the Euphrates. Revelation 16 claims that, that they are the kings from the east and led by the three evil spirits and they will take the path along the river course of the Euphrates and wage war against Israel at the Battle of Amagadon in Megiddo. Let me explain in details. Basic background about the ISIS comes first and then to be followed by the differentiation between the ISIS and ISOs, the kings of the east, the free evil spirits, and the kings of the whole world. Remember shock and awe? Saddam Hussein's dictatorship fell quickly. Goodbye, Saddam! And with it, the dominance of his minority Sunni sect in Iraq. The United States and our allies have prevailed. Scarcely, as the Americans celebrated, a rebellion against U.S. occupation was brewing. Sunni and Shia began to fight each other, and Iraq became fertile territory for the Americans' greater enemy, Al-Qaeda. Eighteen months and thousands of deaths later, U.S. forces did prevail over Al-Qaeda and its Sunni allies in the city of Fallujah. But Iraq's sectarian civil war between Sunni and Shia continued. Realizing that they had to get Iraq's Sunni sheikhs on board, the Americans created the Awakening Councils. Sheikhs who agreed to cooperate with the Shia-dominated government in Baghdad and fight the jihadis got weapons, money and political recognition. It worked. Al-Qaeda in Iraq was beaten for now. But Nouri al-Maliki, who the Americans had pushed forward for election as Prime Minister, was not a man to bridge Iraq's sectarian and political divides. After the 2010 elections, backed by Iran, he refused to cooperate with Sunni politicians. He drove some into exile, imprisoned their supporters, and stopped paying the Awakening Councils. Disaster was in the offing. 
but we're leaving behind a sovereign, stable, and self-reliant Iraq. When the last American soldiers left, the way was clear for Prime Minister Maliki to consolidate Shia power, further alienating Iraq's Sunnis and their regional ally, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Sunnis who started demonstrating in places like Fallujah and Ramadi were brutally suppressed by Maliki's increasingly sectarian military. The jihadis who'd been concentrating on Syria saw their chance. In January, the newly formed ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham, captured Fallujah and Ramadi, greeted enthusiastically by many local Sunnis who loathe Maliki and his government in Baghdad. Now, they've taken Mosul, to Crete, and much of central Iraq. The Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, also known as ISIS, is quickly emerging as one of the world's most powerful jihadist groups. Born during the U.S. occupation of Iraq and battle-hardened by the war in neighboring Syria, ISIS thrived in the power vacuum left by the withdrawal of American troops. Earlier this month, the militants captured Mosul. That was a key victory for them. But ISIS continued to press south along the main highway towards Baghdad. The Sunni militant group waging a blitz through northern Iraq has formally declared the creation of an Islamic caliphate. <laughs> A spokesman for ISIL announced its name change to simply the Islamic State. Wait a minute. On the date of 29 June 2014, ISIS not only declared statehood, but also pledged to free Palestine and declared Jerusalem the capital of the state. In the audio file posted online, he also defined its territory as land running from northern Syria to Iraq's Diyala province and called on Muslims everywhere to swear allegiance to its declared leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The group's goal? Just what the name implies, an Islamic Sunni caliphate stretching across the Middle East. ISIS already controlled large swaths of land in Syria and Iraq's Anbar province. Last week, they moved on Iraq's north. Seemingly overnight, ISIS captured the second largest city of Mosul, robbing banks of hundreds of millions of dollars, releasing prisoners, and imposing their harsh version of Islamic Sharia law. More than half a million residents were forced to flee. We were afraid of ISIS and escaped Mosul because they have no mercy. They butcher people. They kill. They have no conscience. That was just the start. After Mosul, a lightning speed advanced towards Baghdad, with cities and towns falling to ISIS along the way. The Iraqi army, awash with $15 billion worth of U.S. military gear, seemed powerless to stop the advance. As Iraqi soldiers fled their posts, they left behind tanks, Humvees, trucks and weapons, paid for by the Americans and now in the hands of ISIS. The group wasted no time in showing off the new hardware in photographs and videos on the web. The militants have their supporters too. ISIS is also believed to receive financial support from sympathetic Gulf monarchies. We now proceed to the second question. The group of ISIS is sometimes confusingly referred to ISIL. Thank AJ Plus Labs for sharing her following video, which can help us to understand the differentiation between ISIS and ISIL. You may have heard the terms ISIL and ISIS used to refer to an armed group making headlines in Iraq this week. But what's the difference? Nothing. In both acronyms, ISI refers to the Islamic State of Iraq. IC, the Islamic State of Iraq. The difference is in the final letter. The S comes from Al-Sham, which comes from Bilad al-Sham, the classical Arabic name for the region that surrounds the city of Damascus. This same region in English is referred to as the Levant, which explains the L. ISIS, the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. So the two names are one and the same. I'm sure that this video is very good for the general public in the world to understand the difference between ISIS and ISO because it is commonly acceptable that different peoples may have different names for a specific place. Let the highest pitch of the Himalayas as an example. 
English people call it the Mount Everest. Tibetans call it Jumu Langma. The Pali people call it Sagamartha. Therefore, you may think that it doesn't matter whether we call it Isis or Iso. Definitely no. Isis is the name of the Egyptian moon goddess, one of the three evil spirits. And Iso is the kings from the east in Revelation 16. We better have a deeper understanding about them. Let's explore. Isis in Arabic. Dawlat al-Islam fil Iraq wa Sham. In English, it means Islamic State in Iraq and the Sham. The fourth letter of Isis, al Sham, is historic Arab name of the region that surrounds Damascus or simply the Greater Syria. However, the militant group of ISIS may take the Quranic meaning of al Sham. We start our discussion from Abraham, the father of the Arab people as well as the Jewish people. The religion of Islam is completely dependent upon establishing a link between Abraham and the Jewish people. The land in green in the map is the fertile crescent which was the cradle of our civilization as well as the living place of Abraham. The Lord Yahweh called Abraham to leave his home of earth and travel to a land called Canaan. Abraham answered this call faithfully as following the red dot root in the map and went to Canaan. The eastern portion of the land is called Mesopotamia, which is the drainage area of the two rivers of the Tigris and the Euphrates, and which is mainly corresponding to modern-day Iraq. The eastern half is the promised land to Abraham and his descendants given by God. It is of course both Jewish and Arab peoples claim that they have the right to own the land as Abraham's descendants. Koran claims that al Sam is the heart of the abode of the believers and al Sam is the heart of the abode of Islam. Koran also claims that when a man is standing in Mecca and looking east, the land to his right is called Yemen. The name Yemen correspondingly means the land of the right hand, while the land to his left is called al Sam. The name al Sam correspondingly means the land of the left hand. In this sense, the whole territory of Israel is part of al Sam. Therefore, the land of Israel will be the target that is going to be captured by ISIS in the very near future, causing to the Battle of Armageddon. Europeans have a different view on this piece of land and they call it Levant. When European merchants set sail for trade in the Mediterranean Sea, moving eastward towards the easternmost coast, such as Israel and Lebanon, they usually see the sun rising from the land early in the morning. Therefore, they call the land as the land of the rising sun. European authors in the Renaissance refer to the area that largely overlaps al Sam as the Levant for rising in French. That is where the sun rises. Levant has passed into common use among more than Westerners as a way to refer to the land bordering the easternmost coast of the Mediterranean Sea, from southern Turkey down to Israel and Gaza. So, in this sense, ISIS is not only coming out from Iraq along the river Euphrates, but also the kings from the east called ISO note in the Bible. Levant, the east where the sun rises, help us to understand that Iso is one of the kings from the east. However, Iso is a necessary but not a sufficient criterion for the kings from the east note in the Bible. It is because the kings from the east are plural in number. Who else? After the two Americans had been beheaded, US President Obama pledged to wage war against ISIS on September 10, 2014. I can announce that America will lead a broad coalition to roll back this terrorist threat. Our objective is clear. We will degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL through a comprehensive and sustained counterterrorism strategy. Airstrike against ISIS was launched on September 23, 2014. Overnight, U.S. and partner nations carried out 14 intense strikes against ISIS strongholds in Raqqa, Syria, and other northern cities. 
The attacks destroying or damaging multiple targets, including training compounds, headquarters, and command and control facilities, and briefly knocking out power in the region. U.S. forces launching Tomahawk land attack missiles from the sea. The airstrikes targeting key ISIS positions, including the city of Raqqa, where they are essentially based. The attacks meant to degrade their ability to command and control, resupply and train, according to a U.S. military official. Five Arab nations, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain joining in the fight. Four of them helping attack by air alongside U.S. warplanes. Next day, Obama told the public that the Khorezin group is the second target of the airstrike other than the ISIS. Last night on my orders, America's armed forces began strikes against ISIL targets in Syria. Last night, we also took strikes to disrupt plotting against the United States and our allies by seasoned al-Qaeda operatives in Syria who are known as the Khorasan Group. We're known as the Khorasan Group. We're known as the Khorasan Group. And once again, it must be clear to anyone uh, who would plot against America and try to do Americans harm that we will not tolerate safe havens for terrorists who threaten our people. What is the Khorasan Group? Most of us are hearing about the Khorasan terrorist group for the first time. So we asked Homeland Security correspondent Bob Orr to tell us more about it. Taking advantage of the lawlessness inside Syria, Khorasan, a terror cell of veteran al-Qaeda operatives, has been working on new hard-to-detect bombs that can be smuggled aboard airplanes. Al-Qaeda has experimented with non-metallic bombs that may be hidden in shoes, clothing, cell phones, laptops, and even tubes of toothpaste. That intelligence prompted the TSA in July to tighten security for U.S.-bound flights from two dozen foreign airports. Sources say Corazon, which takes orders from al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahiri, includes explosives experts who may have been trained by al-Qaeda's top bomb maker, Ibrahim al-Asiri. Asiri, who is based in Yemen, is the architect of bombs hidden in underwear and computer printers. Unlike ISIS, Khorasan is not battling for territory. Instead, sources say it's plotting external attacks against the West and recruiting American and European radicals. Western passport holders who have joined the jihad in Syria could be used to carry bombs onto planes. Lieutenant General William Mayville said the airstrikes on Khorasan disrupted an imminent plot. The intelligence reports indicated that the Khorasan group was in the final stages of plans to execute major attacks against Western targets and potentially the U.S. homeland. Greater Khorasan is a historic place name of the region which lies mostly in modern-day Afghanistan, Iran, Turkmenistan and Pakistan. The green portion of the map is a pre-2004 province of Iran called Khorasan province. Khorasan is a Persian place name. Khor means the sun, and raisin means rising. Hence, cross plus raisin means the place from which the sun rises, that is, the east. And on November 14, 2014, both ISO and the Khorasan group agreed to end fighting and cooperate against common enemies in Syria. Therefore, ISO and the Khorasan group team up to form the kings from the east noted in the Bible. One additional biblical criterion related to the kings from the east is that the Euphrates should be dried up, preparing the way for them to attack Israel. In 2013, the watchers informed us that the Tigris and Euphrates rivers were losing water reserves at a rapid pace. New data revealed already an arid region of Tigris, Euphrates Basin, which grows even drier due to human consumption of water for drinking and agriculture. The research team led by Jay Famiglietti and Katie Voses of the University of California at Irene and Georgetown University observed the Tigris and Euphrates river basins and found that 144 cubic kilometers of fresh water was lost from 2003 to 2009, roughly equivalent to the volume of the Dead Sea. The drought problems worsened rapidly in recent months. On 30 May 2014, 
El Aklabla News reported that Western hostilities towards Syria reach a new level of viciousness. Turkey, a NATO member, strongly opposed to the current government of Syria. The Turkey's border to Syria is a major supply route for weapons and foreign fighters against the Syrian government. The Turkish government recently cut off the flow of the Euphrates River, threatening primarily Syria, but also Iraq with a major water crisis. El Aklaba found out that the water level in Lake Assad has dropped by about 6 meters, leaving millions of Syrians without drinking water. This is the Kishon Dam in Syria. Syria has cut this off downstream. Now what's happened is because Syria shut this down, it shut down to Iraq. Already within a two days of this report that came out yesterday, they say millions of people are on the verge of not having any water at all. This is a six meter drop. And this is the dam we're looking at. And they again, they've shut this off to try to preserve water, not intentionally cutting it off from Iraq. But what's happened above Syria, Turkey has cut it off. Now, don't know how the exact, we don't know the details on their water supply. We do know there's political pressure on Syria from Turkey because of what um, Assad has been doing to his people. But again, Turkey's north of Syria. Turkey cut it off, Syria now has cut it off to maintain theirs, but they don't have enough there. They're already in trouble. Reservoirs are already running dry. Baghdad is going to be cut off. Now that's going to dry the Euphrates rivers. The drying up conditions of the Euphrates is ready for the kings from the east. Now let's proceed to the fourth theme of the three evil spirits of this chapter. According to the Bible, three evil spirits in the Euphrates River in Iraq were involved in the Battle of Armageddon. Throughout human history, Bo, Ishtar, and Tammuz were the first three evil spirits and which precisely and first appeared in the Euphrates River Basin in the ancient Babylon, corresponding to present-day Iraq. The following discussions will be based on the four major references listed here. The system of worship in Babylonia had its origin in the legion of Nimrod and his wife Semiramis. Nimrod, the great-grandson of Noah, rebelled against God. He proclaimed himself as a powerful god Baal. He also married with his mother Semiramis. Eventually Nimrod was put to death for his evil deeds by Sam, son of Noah. The body of Nimrod was cut into pieces and his body parts were sent to various cities by Shem to let the people know that Nimrod was not a god but just a human being. Nimrod's followers became very frightened. His wife Semiramis fled but retrieved all the body parts of Nimrod except his male organ and spread the rumor that he had ascended to heaven where he had become one with the sun. That is to say Nimrod became the sun god Semiramis also claimed that she was the moon goddess because she was born from a big egg accompanied by a rabbit falling from the moon. After the death of Nimrod, Semiramis gave birth to a son. She claimed that the sun god Nimrod shined his ways upon her and that her son was the reincarnation of her deified husband and that he returned to save the human race. Her son was called Tammuz. In the various cultures throughout history and around the world, the same basic deities have been worshipped under different names. In Egypt, the sun god was called Osiris, the moon goddess was called Isis, and their son Horus was the eagle god. Egyptian and Babylonian versions of their stories have some difference. Osiris and Isis were brother and sister. They loved one another and got married. Osiris was killed by his brother Set. On the third day after the death of Osiris, Isis used her power to recall Osiris to come back to our earth to make her pregnant. Later she gave birth to their son called Horus, the eagle god. Throughout our human history, most of us agree that the king of the beast is lion and the king of the birds is eagle. 
ever since the first appearance of the eagle god of Horus in Egypt. The emblem of eagle has widely been used by many empires such as Spain, Byzantium, the Holy Roman, Russia, Saladin, the German Empire, etc. Saladin eagle is still widely used today by many Arab countries such as Iraq, Syria and Egypt. In short, the three evil spirits from the Euphrates River in Iraq mentioned in the Bible are the Sun God, the Moon Goddess and the Eagle God. One thing I would like to remind you is that the name of the Egyptian Moon Goddess is called Isis, while the Islamic State in Iraq and the Sham is also called Isis. Both of them are the same. These three evil spirits were originated from Babylon and they all still stay in Iraq today. Today's Iraq comprises three major ethnic groups, Kurds, Sunni Muslims and Shiite Muslims. They all are the representatives of the three evil spirits. Kurds have been fighting for independence for many years. Their flag contains the emblem of the sun god. Shiite Muslims are still ruling Iraq in the south. The national emblem of their country is the emblem of the eagle god. There is a recent uprising Islamic extremist terrorist jihadist group out from the Sunni Muslims. Their name is exactly the same as the name of the Egyptian moon goddess. Both of them are called Isis. Besides, the symbol of a full moon can also be found in the flag of the Islamic State. Unlike the Islamic State, the Khorasan group use rays of the rising sun in their flag. We now proceed to the last frame of this chapter. The Bible says that these three evil spirits will go out to the kings of the world and gather them for the battle of Armageddon. Up to now, over 60 nations have joined the coalition. Many of them are subordinate to the three evil spirits. Let's say Japan, Jordan. China, Taiwan, and the Kurdish people are subordinate to the Sun God. Turkey, Malaysia, Quetta, and Singapore are subordinate to the Moon God. And the US, Iraq, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, France, Germany, Czech Republic, Albania, Hungary, Romania, Kuwait, Poland, and Egypt are subordinate to the ego god. Up to now, the present day situations in Syria and Iraq is very clear. The dry river bed of the Euphrates River, the kings of the East, the ISO and the Khorasan group, and the kings of the whole world, the US coalitions, all of them are ready. No more time left. Please repent and believe in Jesus and serve him wholeheartedly. Anyway, get ready. Jesus is coming soon. Before I say goodbye to you, I would like to recommend two video clips to you. If you want to know more about how the moon gods lead the Islamic army to attack Israel, please go to the following web page to watch Chapter 10, 666, Two Horn Beast, and the Jerusalem War. And if you want to know more about how the U.S. manipulates the world to attack Israel, Please go to the following web page to watch Chapter 12, 666, Two Horn Beast, The Illuminati, The New World Order and World War III. May God bless us and protect us. Goodbye.